Hi there everybody, this is Miss Nelson here and today we are doing lesson 13.3 in our fourth grade Florida Go Math books. Lesson 13.3 is on page 505 and 506 in your big math book. That's what you should be filling out as you're watching this video. And this lesson is called Area of Combined Rectangles. So we already found out in 13.2 how to find the area of shapes. Now we're just going to have a couple shapes stuck together. You're going to have to figure out how to break them apart. And then you just find the area, base times height. And then you're going to add those together. So I'm going to show you. That might sound like a lot, but I'm going to show you here. Jan is visiting a botanical garden with her family. The diagram shows two rectangular sections of the garden. So the rose garden is one rectangle section of it. And the herb garden is the second rectangular section of it. What is the total area of the two sections? There are different ways to find the area of combined rectangles. So they're saying that the first way is just to um, draw it out on grid paper and then count the squares that are inside. So in the rose garden, there would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24 square meters. In the herb garden, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. And then since they want the total, we'll have to add that 24 and 16 in order to get our total of 40 square meters. Now that way is fine. You can draw it on grid paper and count each and every little square, but it kind of takes a long time. Another way, which I like better, is to use the area formula, which is base times height. So do base times height first for the roads garden, then for the herb garden, and then just add those two together. So let's try that, rose garden, base times height. My base is 8, my height is 3, 8 times 3 is 24. Now for the herb garden, base times height. My base is 4, my height, now this is a little bit trickier here. My height of my herb garden, you have to look right here. It's got an arrow pointing to the height. It's saying it's 4. Okay, 4 times 4 is 16. And then I just add those two together. 24, 16, 40 square meters. So the total area is 40 square meters. Now, personally, I think this way, using the formula, is a lot easier. You don't have to redraw it onto grid paper, and you don't have to count each and every square. Think of how many chances you have to mess up on your counting as you go through each and every square. Whereas if you're just doing two multiplication problems and an addition problem, it's going to be less much chance of messing up. So that's how we find the area of combined rectangles. We're going to try another one. So let's flip our page over to 506. Okay, here on 506, we've got a new example. It says Greg is laying carpet in the space outside his laundry room. The diagram shows where the carpet will be installed. So everything that's orange over here is going to be carpet. The space is made out of combined rectangles or more than one rectangle. What is the area of the carpeted space? You can find this either doing addition or subtraction. So first step, split these up into rectangles, two different rectangles. So I'm going to split it up here. Um, you could also split it up like this. So instead of drawing the line across like this, you could draw the line down like this. And that will work perfectly fine too. So as long as you see that you can make it into two different shapes, then you're fine. All right, we'll go with this one here. And we're going to find first the area of rectangle A and then the area of rectangle B. Remember, area is base times height. So on A, I'm looking at my base is 8, because 8 is pointing right here to my base. They put that in already for me. And my height right here is 9. 
So 8 times 9 is 72. Now I need to find my area for rectangle B. So I'm looking here at rectangle B. My base, just this part right here is 16. So I'm going to put that in there. And my height is 17. They've already done that for me. So 16 times 17 is 272. Now before I add my 72 and my 272, I want to go back over here and make sure that you're not getting confused. A lot of kids, when we move to um, B and we're looking at the base, they're used to be the base being on the bottom, so they choose 24 as the base, but that's not right because 24 goes from here all the way over to here. So we don't want to pick the number that goes all the way this far because that's not our base. That's the base of the whole entire thing, and we only want the base of this square. So be careful for that. All right, now back to solving the problem. We still, we have the area for rectangle A, and we have the area for rectangle B, but we need to add them together. So 72 plus 272 is 344 square feet. So that's one way. Now they're giving us another way. They say instead of breaking this area up into two different rectangles, just make it into one big rectangle like this. Find the area of this big rectangle and then just subtract this little white part right here that doesn't have carpet. So let's do that. Let's find the area of the whole big rectangle which I can see my base is 24. It goes from this end all the way to this end. So my base is 24. My height from the bottom all the way to the top is 17. So my first problem is 27, I mean 24 times 17, which is 408. But then I need to remember to subtract this white part over here that is not carpeted. Now this is where I look for those base and heights. They got an arrow saying that this base right here is 8 and the height right here is 8. So my base and my height are both 8 for that. And 8 times 8 is 64. So instead of adding this time, I don't want this white part. I want only the orange part for carpet. So I'm going to take away the white part. So I'm going to do 408 minus 64, which gives me 344 square feet. So the area of the carpeted space is 344 square feet. Okay, if you can see this little tiny thing down here at the bottom of your page, it says, is there another way that you could divide the figure to find the total area? Yes, you could. I showed that to you right up here. Whereas they drew their line to break the rectangles up here, you could also draw your line to break the rectangles up this way. So the horizontal way or the vertical way. So the answer to the question down here is yes. You could divide it horizontally rather than vertically. Okay, that's been Lesson 13.3. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a message.